it's Will Hoobians, Hoobian Queen here, and I'm back from my week-long vacation that I had last week, because, well, last week on Thursday, it was my birthday, so there you go. Anyway, so, a look at the Tenth Doctor Era continues on with Rise of the Cybermen. So, here we go. The TARDIS lands by mistake in London on a parallel Earth. <clears throat> the trip has caused all the TARDIS, <coughs> apart from a small power cell, to die. The Tenth Doctor energizes the cell with some of his own life force. The cell needs 24 hours to fully recharge before the Doctor, Rose, and Mickey can return home. Rose is shocked to see a billboard with her father, Pete's picture on it. Mickey decides to head off on his own and try to find his grandmother, who died in his universe. The Doctor and Rose discover that most of the population in London wear earpod devices that feed information directly into the wearer's brains from Cypress Industries which owns Pete's company, Vitex. Meanwhile, the head of Cybus Industries, John Lumick, tries and fails to gain approval from the President of Great Britain for his plan to upgrade humanity by placing their brains into metal exoskeletons. Hmm. Unknown to everyone else, Lumick has already been secretly turning homeless people into cyborgs. Cybus is being investigated by a group called the Preachers, who have been receiving secret information about Loomis, about Lumix's technology. Jake Simmons, one of the preachers, witnesses a group of homeless people being taken to be converted and goes to collect help. Jake finds Mickey at his grandmother's house and confuses him with his parallel counterpart, Ricky. Jake takes Mickey to the preacher's base where Ricky and Mickey meet. After some initial distrust, Mickey decides to join the preachers as they follow beside this van that kidnapped the homeless to Pete's wife Jackie's birthday party. <clears throat> Jackie's birthday party. Rose and the doctor also investigate the party and don servant garb to disguise themselves. Suddenly, the party is interrupted by the Cybermen, who smash into the house and surround the guests. Lumic calls the president, who is in attendance, telling him that he is moving forward with his plan so that all the humanity will be upgraded. Lumic tells everyone that upgrading is compulsory. A Cyberman kills the president for refusing to comply. The party girls panic, try to flee, and the Cybermen begin killing them. The Doctor, Rose, and Pete escape the house and encounter Mickey and the preachers outside. As the group is surrounded by Cybermen, the Doctor tells everyone to surrender and tells the Cybermen that they are volunteering for the upgrade. The Cybermen tell them that they are incompatible and will be deleted. Bom bom bom. So yeah, but don't worry, this is part one. This is part one of a two-parter, so we'll see how things resolve next week. So anyway, let's look at the production of this episode. Doctor Who Magazine number 368 confirmed that this story was inspired by the Big Finish Productions audio play Spare Parts. Where Steve Davis had previously described, along with the Holy Terror, as, quote, some of the finest drama ever written for any genre, in any medium, anywhere, end quote. Spare Parts Arthur, Mark Platt, received a fee and was credited in the end titles, with thanks to Mark Platt. And there was a nod in the dialogue with Mickey labeling himself as a spare part. However, writer Tom McRae noted that his television story was not a simple rewrite of spare parts. Quote, My story isn't the same. It's got a different setting, different themes, and different characters. Because once we started talking, the whole thing developed in a very different action. But as Russell says, we could have started this whole line of thinking if he hadn't heard spare parts in the first place. End quote. <clears throat> Early drafts of the story featured body shops, where wealthy people would purchase new cybernetic limbs. Davies vetoed this element because he found it unbelievable. He also instructed Tom McRae to tone down the differences between the parallel universe versions of the characters and their real <clears throat> universe counterparts. Quote, I think it was one of those great lessons about the freedom of science fiction, as well as its greatest dangers. Because when you're creating a parallel world, you suddenly get excited by seeing everyone with their eye patches. <coughs> Unquote, said Davies, referring to the alternative Brigadier Leftford Stewart in Inferno. According to Graham Harper in the episode commentary, the pre credit sequence <coughs> was written by Russell T. Davies as he was not satisfied with the original opening. In the commentary, it is noted <coughs> that Jackie's 40th birthday is a reference to the 40th anniversary of the broadcast of the Tenth Planet, the first appearance of the Cybermen. Ah. 
Location of shooting took place at the Coal Exchange and Mount Stewart Square, Cardiff Bay. The external shots of the chimneys and many of the internal shots were taken at, at Oskamoth Power Station in Newport. Mickey sports a large tattoo on his right biceps. According to actor Noel Clark's commentary, the tattoo was makeup applied for the episode. The art took a look at the 2006 Cybermen design, follows from that, follows that for the webcast real time. According to the episode commentary, Director Graham Harper won an Art Deco feel to the parallel universe Earth. Art Deco costumes had previously been used for the K-1 robot in Robot, and for much of the cast, including robots, in the Robots of Death. The Art Deco design, as well as the robotic movements of the Cybermen, are reminiscent of Fritz Lang's Metropolis, which is a pretty darn good movie you should definitely watch it when you get the chance. Unlike the two-part stories from the 2005 series, this episode featured no next time trailer for the episode, only a title card reading to be continued. The first time the phrase has ever been used in an episode in the program's history. The production team had stated previously that one episode in the series <clears throat> was so long that there was no time for a preview. Many viewers, and writer Stephen Moffat, had criticized the use of a preview for World War III at the end of the 2005 episode Aliens of London as it spoiled the dramatic cliffhanger ending. Beginning with The Impossible Planet, trailers for the second part of the story story run during the Middle Eighth, after the main credits, to allow viewers time to switch off. Official BB websites include cyberindustries.net, cybersfitness.co.uk, and web.archive.org slash web 20060701050. Seven four seven slash at http colon slash international electronics dot co dot uk. Other ceremony name websites are run by fans. The BBC also registered the following donate names: cybersindustries dot com, cybersindustries dot co dot uk, cybersfinance dot com, cybersfinance dot co dot uk, cybersindustries dot com, and cybers cybersproperty dot com and cybusproperty.co.uk. Another website created by BBC is web.archive.org slash web slash 20090414221407 slash http colon slash slash www.henrix.co.uk slash index.htm for the department store, Rose had worked at the episode in Rose. Its, its bookstore includes the images of both John Lumick's book, Man of Steel, and Jackie Taylor's biography, The Strong Survive. Interesting. Now, finally, let's take a look at cast notes. Colin Spall played the role of, Lil of Lilith in Revelation of the Daleks, which was also directed by Graham Harper. Spall is the sixth actor to appear in both the original series and the revival. He also appeared in the audio play Grand Theft Cosmos as Henrik. Don Warrington, who plays the president, previously provided the voice for the for Time Lord founder Rastalon in the Doctor Who audio plays Seasons of Fear, Neverland, and Sagreus, produced by Big Finish Productions. Helen Griffin later appeared in the audio play Cobwebs. Paul Anthony Barber later played Ludovic Comfort in the in the audio play The Magic Mouse Trap. Graham Harper is the first director to have directed stories in the original and new series of Doctor Who, having previously directed The Caves of Androzani and Revelation of the Daleks. As seen in Doctor Who Confidential episode Cybermen, the actors playing Cybermen went through extensive choreographing to perfect their movements. Roger Lloyd Pack and David Tennant previously worked together in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, playing father and son, Barty Crouch Sr. and Barty Crouch Jr. respectively. According to The Sun, Roger Light Pack broke his leg just days before filming began the episode, requiring the scripts being rewritten to place his character, John Lumick, in a wheelchair. When writer Tom McCray told Doctor Who magazine in issue number 369 that no rewrites were necessary, the script always had Lumick in a wheelchair, as this became part of his motivation for creating the Cybermen, given that he was in a wheelchair and dying and wanted to prolong his life. Roger Lightpack told the Daily Mirror he that he based the character of Lumic on Don Donald Rumsfeld. 
quote. I thought, who is a power-hungry, mad person who believes he is completely right and has a lot of control? Donald Rumsfeld came to mind. He's a bad a man as I see around now, end quote. So overall, that's the first part to a two-part story. It's actually pretty darn good, and it definitely sets up things that will more than likely pay off in the next part. So overall, I give Rise of the Cybermen four Sonic Screwdrivers out of five. Well, tune in next week as we take a look at The Age of Steel. Well, I hope you liked this review, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it around, also subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to click the notification bell so you can know when I upload videos. And also, if you want to help me make better videos, then be sure to check out my Patreon. I'll put a link to that in the description below. So, until next time, this is Hoobie and Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt! When I say run, run! I prefer to play with the new Trumplo. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic! Add-on-Z! Geronimo! Bowties are cool, fesses are cool, and Stetsons are cool. Thank you.